Hey guys, welcome back to Long Long Honeymoon in Asia. That's right, Loloho is still lost in Asia, but we have not forgotten about our campfire questions from Robert Winchester. How do you plan a trip and places to stop, and how long do you start planning a trip? So Robert's question gets to the heart of, I think, the difference between a nomad and a traveler or vacationer. Yeah. Because it really boils down to time. I do think time is the ultimate luxury when you're traveling. And those times when we have traveled and had that luxury of time, we don't plan very much. Quite often, we only plan a day or two in advance. If you look in the RV nomad community, a lot of people live that way day to day, drifting around and just finding places that they like. Which I know is madness to a lot of people, but that's sort of the way we like to travel because we don't like to be on a strict time schedule as far as having to check in somewhere on a certain date. We like to get to a place. If we like it, we stay a little longer. If we don't like it, we move on faster than we had originally planned. If you don't have the luxury of time, then depending on where you're going, you might need to start planning months in advance. If you're trying to get into Yellowstone National Park in the middle of July, and you've only got a week to do it, then you probably need to start planning a good six months in advance. It really just depends on what your destination is and if it's the high season where you're going, if you're traveling in the off season, if you need to be right in the middle of things, if you are willing to drive a little ways to get to what you want to see from your campground. We can tell you the resources that we use when we do plan. When we're looking at campgrounds, we tend to look at Good Sam reviews. We tend to look at rvparkreviews.com and Campendium, which is an app they also have a website that you can look at. And that gives us a good balance of opinions as far as if a campground is worth it, as far as things to do and things to see when we're going to different places. TripAdvisor is a great place to look for things to do, tours to take, what's worth it, what's not, how much you're gonna spend, how much time it's gonna take. And then as far as places to eat, Yelp is a great resource to find good restaurants with really detailed reviews. I love the feeling I get when we travel far from home to a place I've never been before. When we're traveling, if we're happy in a location, we might stick around an extra few days and there's no pressure of having another commitment down the road, another reservation that we have to get to. And we've done that in international travel as well too. A few years ago, we did a trip throughout Spain and France, Morocco, Portugal, those kind of places. Same kind of trip as this. We rarely made any kind of reservation more than a day or two in advance. We would book flights the day before. This isn't all wine and roses when you travel like this yeah. because sometimes it's a pain in the butt because you have to break out your laptop and book something a day before and it can eat up a lot of your time when you're traveling. Yeah. And again, if you don't have the luxury of time, if you have everything planned out in advance, your you time is not wasted. It. it can be a time consuming process, figuring out the best RV park or the best hotel and so forth. You know, if you have short blocks of time, then I think it's more critically important that you do that planning. And it also depends on your personality type. Are you somebody that likes to have everything planned and done months in advance and have everything to look forward to and you've done all your detailed research and you know every detail of where you're going and what you're gonna see and do? Or are you somebody that you'd rather just sort of wing it and see what you can find on your own and do a little bit of research but not really heavy duty? Some people aren't up for that and I totally understand. <laughs> life as kind of a spiritual journey and I like going on that walkabout and with almost no set destination and you see where the path takes you and where your own inner voice takes you yeah. and so I know that's probably getting a little bit out there for you know folks who have a certain block of time 
Well, today I'm very excited because we're going to go inside and see some pasties. No, we're going inside to eat a pasty. Pasties. Yeah, it's pronounced pasty. You know, I can think one time we were in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We spent the night in the gas station because we had no RV park reservation and everything was booked solid. Yeah, summer in Michigan. Don't mess around up there. So, <laughs> shout out to that gas station that let us stay there overnight. Yeah, they let us park around back overnight. It was uh, a very welcome respite because we were desperate at that point. So I don't think any of us uh, daydream about sleeping in gas stations, but that's the kind of thing that can happen to you if you don't plan in advance and everything's booked. You know, yeah. you could get burned. If you are somebody that sort of wants to be a happy medium between those two, I think a lot of times you won't have much trouble booking a week or two in advance, with the exception of some of the more popular national parks like Yellowstone and um, Yosemite, places like that, or like really high density um, areas with not a lot of options like Key West. Key West is somewhere that there's only a certain number of campsites and you either get one or you don't. And if you're trying to go there in winter, then you know you need to plan in advance. I get asked a lot how far in advance people should book to stay at Fort Wilderness at Walt Disney World. And I tell them the sooner the better because I know people that book years in advance there. Yes, you can sort of slide in last minute every now and then, but it's not guaranteed. And if it's the focus of your vacation, then you need to book it as far out as you can. I think this is the kind of place where you can take a thousand different photographs, and people do, and yet you're still not doing the overall experience justice. So alright guys, that is another episode of Loloho Lost in Asia. Thanks for the great campfire question, Robert. <laughs> and rest assured, we will be producing more RV travel videos and more videos about all this stuff that we're seeing yeah. in Asia in the weeks and months to come. Yep, so don't worry, the RV stuff isn't going away and we are going to bring you some more international travel as well. So it'll be a happy little mix of both. As always, thank you for tuning in to Long Long Honeymoon. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it is helpful to you in your travels. Tell us what you use when you are planning your trips. If you have a cool website or a app that you use that you swear by, leave it in the comments down below and we'll check it out. And let us know, do you plan in advance? or do you just wing it? I think we've got a lot of both types of people in our audience. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Until next time, what do we say here? We say... Lo-lo-ho. Lo-lo-ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.